serious e uh, several events contests and webinars to sensitize everyone today we are going to have a webinar on breaking the myths on, on wildlife and it is an eye time for us to break the myth belief and false belief about the wildlife and step towards the conservation and protect our mother nature and the wildlife to present today's webinar we have our eminent zoo veterinarian dr pa kalenyan dr pa kalenyan as a post graduate in wildlife science He has got a vast experience in neonatal care, human wildlife conflict mitigation, and wildlife translocation. Neonatal care of mammals and birds, and is he has he has trained various grass. Sorry for the uh, technical clutch. Dr. Pa Kalenjan has trained various graduate. and postgraduate students forest officers field veterinarians and veterinary faculties of the from different universities regarding the wildlife conservation wildlife health management and conflict mitigation he is one of our four mentor of our zoo education program so let's welcome dr pa kalenjan today for the session thank you ma'am Good afternoon, and all. Um, I am very happy to meet you all again in this uh, prestigious uh, Wildlife Week celebration, 2020. Um, so we will start with our uh, today's session of uh, breaking the myths on wildlife. So before going into the myths about uh, wild animals and uh, proper uh, like other animals too. let's see about what are there are some mythical creatures which has uh, been created by our uh, forefathers so if we see the mythical creatures there are lots and lots of uh, mythical creatures around the world in different mythologies say it can be a greek mythology and egyptian mythology um say um, uh, south american um, tribal mythology native uh, north american mythology um, irish uh, chinese indian lots and lots of mythologies are there so in each mythology if you see there will be lots of mythical creatures so before going into mythical creatures let's see what is a myth a myth is a thing like which is not uh, present or which is which was not present also which is like imaginative uh, stuff which is not true at all so those things are called as uh, myths so those mythical creatures were not at all found or like that they are not going to be found also in the future so in this slide you can see lots of uh, mythical creatures say for example you can see a pegasus you all will be like uh, knowing this a flying horse see the imagine of the imagination of the human being you know, like we have gone to a extent so this were these creatures were not created by uh, me or like by present generation or these creatures were created before some uh, 3000 years back some 2000 years back so see the imagination level of our forefathers like how they have imagined and created such creatures there can be a giant in some stories A cyclops. Cyclops are the creatures with only uh, one eye. A werewolf. Werewolf for the creature. A normal human being will be turned to a wolf when uh, it sees a moon. Sees the moon. And you can say griffin. Griffin is one of the powerful uh, Greek mythological uh, creatures, wherein it has a eagle body, eagle head, and a lion body. So eagle is considered as a king of birds, and lion as king of the animals. so it's like combining both of them and you can see a chimera so it's like a lion body and a snake as a tail for it and as a fire emitting goat on on the back and sphinx this is a egyptian mythology 
sphinx is a creature with a lion body and a human head and a bird wing so this will be a, like a gatekeeper for most of the egyptian uh, like temples or places for the city so it is like god temple god uh, god in god kind of thing and medusa like snake headed uh, women character so mermaid again a women character with uh, like fish and the human body cerebrus again this is a gatekeeping uh, creature for in the greek mythology which has got like three uh, heads a dog head which always got some uh, um, gate and hydra uh, again another mythological creature uh, the thing about hydra is like uh, it has got some nine head and if you cut one head it will grow as uh, two heads so see the imagination level and how they have imagined uh, those times and like they have given solution to how to control hydra also so the legendary hercules as learn how to cut a hydra head so he'll sever the head he'll uh, cauterize the wound with fire so it can go grow again so most of things like our like scary uh, creatures some are like kind of uh, very uh, kind of creatures kind of a unicorn unicorn is one of the like uh, very fairy creature in this uh, greek mythology then again centaur uh, animal uh, trunk like human trunk and animal uh, back so this all type of uh, mythical creatures which were not at all present which were which are not going to be in the future also so this all the uh, some some of few mythical creatures around the world so next let's see the mythical creatures what our indian uh, guys have done so if you see like uh they have they have gone like way beyond those other uh, mythical creatures you can see this is uh the top left is the yari so yari is like elephant uh, head and uh, body of a lion but the size of yari is like way bigger than elephant it can kill elephant so those during those times elephant is the biggest uh, terrestrial mammal like till now it's the biggest terrestrial mammal but they have created a creature to kill an elephant also so that much imagination they have got and uh, this one is the kamadeva who is like uh, god or mother of all uh, cattle so it's like that's got all divinely uh, characters in kamadeva then again if we see in the top down you can see uh, airavad so airavad we we'll say so it's like it's the elephant king of elephants and it's the elephant for uh, indra the lord of rain so if you see like all this are like creatures which were created some places only for us for the gods some places they were created to scare the children also and uh, some places as a story so on the last you can see a navagunjara so this is like a creature with the nine different animals in that see like 200 years by thinking about uh, think about the uh, genesis where uh, work they have done and our guys were done like rocked it see the imagination like uh, tigers uh, limb and uh, horse limb elephants and uh, rhinos limb and a human hand also this creates like four different species and a bulls uh, hump you can see tail as a uh, even the Greek mythology. They are only used three animals together, but our guys have like really rocked it, and they have gone way beyond. It's like uh, Gregor Mendel will be like astonished. What, what guys, what, what you have done? Like nine animals. Alex, we are uh, struggling with cloning today nowadays, but they have created such creatures in their imagination with like nine animals. Then, so this kind of mythical creatures and. Uh, we are coming to the low stream like then they sort thought of like uh, creating some stories for each animal what they are seeing so like this all like, imaginary uh, creatures but for the like present like living animals they have started uh, creating some uh, mythical stories and myths regarding that so we will see that in the future slides let's come like there are lots of myths and uh, misconceptions also so we will see all together 
So first we'll see a hibernating bear. So we all know bears hibernate, and we do have exceptions in that. Like say our sloth bears, they don't hibernate, so we can't uh, put hib uh, sloth bears in here. So for example, if it's a Himalayan black bear or a polar bear or Alaskan bear, brown bear, some any anyone, like we'll think like if winter comes, they'll uh, go for hibernation. So that's the myth. If you are breaking the myth, the truth is. In winter, they won't have uh, proper food. There'll be scarcity of food. If there is proper food, they won't. They, they don't need to hibernate. So there's a very scarce and scarcity for food. So they'll eat up in uh, summer and they'll uh, go for a winter sleep. That's hibernation. So this is one simple um, breaking the myth concept. So bears, they don't hunt like no not needed actually. That's another example of sloth bear. If all bears need to hibernate, then why sloth bears are not hibernating? Because there is no such very big scarce of food in uh, like other part of India apart from uh, Himalayas. Because winter is not so severe and they'll get lots of good amount of food. So this is one uh, breaking the myth. And another uh, fascinating thing is like whale. So whale is the biggest animal ever lived in the world. Even like before uh, Jurassic era also, like after Jurassic era, so even not even a single uh, dinosaur has crossed uh, whales' uh, dimensions. So the blue whale is one of the, not one of the blue whale is the biggest ever lived creation in the world. And even in uh, our Indian mythology, that is one mythical creature also called as uh, Thimigila. So Thimi means whale in the Sanskrit, and Gila means to swallow, like to suck. So usually in Tamil we say whale as Thimigilam, but um, they have named it as Thimigila. So their imaginations have gone such a way, like they have created a yari to kill an elephant. So they have created a Thimigila to kill, swallow a whale also. Such a big uh, animal they have created. So if you see a whale, so we'll say like a whale has got a uh, whale's tongue is almost equal to an elephant. Whale's heart is size of a car. Such a huge, uh, magnificent uh, body, and so we'll think they can swallow big amount of biggest, like very uh, big creatures also. So, but the real truth is, whales can't swallow bigger animals or bigger anything. They can the maximum size they can swallow is like a grape or like to the maximum uh, orange. Because their throat is very small, they can swallow. Because blue whales, the their type of a baleen whale, they'll have baleen symptoms. So they'll be like interlocking. What they'll do, they'll suck water, they'll drink the water, and with that, they'll uh, take lots of phytoplankton, zooplankton, skills. That's an important a small uh, uh, marine creature. They'll eat a lot. So they'll suck with that, and they'll get swallowed. So for the small things, they don't need a bigger uh, throw to get swallowed. So for here, the whale, they can't swallow a bigger prey, not even like, not a human, nothing. Only a small uh, grape or orange only they can, so maximum they can swallow. Next, elephant. Elephant has got lots and lots of myths around the world. So one uh, main thing is like, we say elephant, elephants are uh, strong. The real truth is elephants are very gentle animals. They are, we say in them as uh, gentle giants. They walk very gently. So like they can't, uh, other animals around them, like they can't uh, get that shiver, shiverness. Or they, they won't stop at all. Apart from that, elephant has got uh, lots of myths also. One is like uh, elef we say elephant as a uh, trunk, which can be used as a straw. Like they can drink water with the trunk. Yes, they do drink water with the trunk, but they'll set the water, they'll uh, keep the trunk as a type of uh, storage element and they'll put the trunk in the mouth and they'll drink water. So the second myth is like elephant trunk is not as strong. Another thing is like elephant's uh, tusk. Elephant tusk is nothing but a uh, teeth. It's a modified incisor teeth, not the canine teeth. Usually the canine teeth is the one which is like very uh, 
sharp uh, teeth in all animals, but in elephants, it's a modified uh, incisor teeth, not the canine teeth. So these are a few things. And another important thing about elephant, the myth is like we, most of the Indian movies, the world movies, they say about elephant uh, as a very uh, good uh, power of you know, reminding stuff and they'll take revenge. Their memory is like very good because elephant's brain is one of the biggest brains in the world. And so, yes, they do have a very good memory power. But the thing is like they don't take revenge kind of thing. But the myth about the memory is like it's true. It's not a myth, it's a true. Because they need to travel a lot. They need to travel uh, hundreds of kilometers for like for uh, migration. So for, for these things, like they need to remember the things. So they have very good memory power. And sometimes like um, the young animals, like sometimes like they'll the females will go out of the herd, they'll form a new herd and all. So there was that's a record like after 23 years, a mother and a calf met after 23 years and they rec recognized themselves as mother and calf. So this this much of memory power they have, but the revenge part is the myth. Next is the moles are blind. So regarding this blindness and the visual things, there are lots of myths. We will see that one, one by one. So mole is a small uh, rodent. The thing is like moles are not blind. They are, their vision, the vision is poor, that's it. But they are, they, they are not blind. Very few animals are there in the world which are blind, but moles are not blind. Again, uh, what I said, like with the blindness and the vision, there are lots of uh, myths. And the next one is the blindness bat. So bats, we all know they are not prone animals. They have, they again, they have a very poor vision, but it doesn't mean they can't see. They can see also, but the way they navigate is by the sonar. The the waves they send, it will get reflected upon something and it'll come back. That's how they navigate. So bats are not blind; they can see. Another uh, comical character is. Uh, mouse and cheese so we all be like uh, knowing most of the cartoons which we grew up with seeing this rats and mouse they like cheese even the jerry the tom and jerry's uh, jerry is like fond of cheese they can catch a uh, they say they can catch a mouse with the cheese but the real truth is no mouse don't like cheese cheese is not uh, like a very strict uh, liking for a mouse. They eat if they come across, but it's not the favorite food. They choose some Swedish substances, substances rather than a cheese. So mouse always eat a cheese is another uh, myth. And um, cats eat uh, rat. You say like cats always eat rat. That is uh, true actually because cats don't. Uh, have uh, specific amino acids in their body. Only rats has that, so they need to eat. They they are bound to eat. Uh, not even rat. They, they are carnivorous animals, so they need to hunt something and they have to eat. Then rhinos. So we all know rhinos are like one of the mega bios. Even India has uh, one species of rhino, the Indian uh, unicornus, like the one horn, the great one horn rhinoceros. And other parts of the world say, for example, if it's a uh, Indonesian part or African, they have a two-horned rhinoceros. We all think uh, rhinos, uh, that appendix which on top of the nose, it's a horn. But actually, it's not a proper horn. It's a false horn. So if it's a horn, horn means there'll be a bony structure. On top of it, there'll be a cap. That's the horn. So for example, in cattle, it's a wild boar, a buffalo, you can see. In a goat, you can see. Those stuffs are called horns, but here it's a type of a ham or a crust, which is like like our hair is made up of keratin. So same stuff is like, so the rhino's uh, appendix is made up of the same kind of uh, material, keratin only. So it's a kind of a modified uh, crust or modified a ham. So rhinos don't have a horn. Another myth has been break. 
So regarding blind and uh, vision, another thing is like color blind. So color blind is uh, um, part of the animal anatomy and physiology need to be studied well more in future. There are lots of still no lots of uh, research is going on in that. So for example, in a bull fight, we see. Uh, we say like bulls or uh, bulls don't like red in color. That's why like bullfighters in Spain they will be using a red color cloth. The real thing is like uh, bulls are colorblind. They can't see uh, color. They will see color in the different shades of uh, white and black and gray. Only. They can't see as like as what like uh, we see. So in a bull bull fight they will use uh, red color. The movement only like will uh, instigate the animal to run, not the color. You know, like lots of movies have come like where they say like uh, they have lots of uh, aversion towards red color but that's not true so through the movement they do that usually bulls are kind of a solid animal they don't like uh, much uh, companions of other species and all so like and why the spain's bullfighters use the red color because like sometimes they'll be uh, not sometimes many times they'll be uh, Blood stains happening where they'll be having spears, knives, so they'll be poking the animal and all. So, to avoid those uh, stainings in a white color or other colors, so they used to merge with the environment, they use the red color. And in case of dogs and cats, we say uh, they are colorblind, but they are not uh, truly colorblind. Uh, they can see, uh, they are better than a bull or a hubby wolf, right? they can see a slight uh, higher level of colors. But they can't see like us. None of the animals can see like us. And the next, hand eaters. So next myth about the wild animal is like this is a hand eater. So we all think hand eaters go and uh, eat the ants by putting their uh, um, snout inside the hand till and they'll just suck it. Like an elephant's trunk, what uh, misnomer we had. Same thing we have, many people have for the hand eaters also. But the real truth is, hand eaters will put their snout inside the hand heel, but they'll uh, protrude their long and sticky tongue out of their mouth. Those uh, sticky, this sticky uh, tongue will go and stick with the hands and then they'll eat. So this is how they eat. They won't suck the hand and they'll eat. Because like you can see the snout, the trunk is like very long and uh, linear. So we think like it's it will just go and suck it. So that's not a, that's a myth. Again, another common myth about uh, mammal is a camel. Camel hump, camel as hump. There are two types of camels, as we all know. One is crocodilian camel, and another is bacterian camel. So in case of uh, crocodilian camel, it has one hump on the back. In case of bacterian camel, it has two arms on the back. So we all uh, think, so uh, in childhood, we were, most of us were taught as camel's back as uh, water storage. So it's not a water tank or water storage at all. It's just a fact. Because camels are one of the animals which can conserve lots of water, you know, because they live in very dry uh, areas. So in case of dominated camels, they live in uh, hot desert. In case of bacterial camel, they live in a very cold environment, like a Gobi desert, wherein the temperature drops uh, till minus 60 degrees Celsius. So these places, they, they have to survive without water, because they don't get much water, they need to conserve their water. But for that, like they don't need uh, water storage at the hump and all. Because none of the animals can storage uh, store water like that. Elephants can store water in the trunk for some time, then they'll leave it. So camels don't store water on the hump. The thing is in the hump is the fact because camels even they don't get proper food for days together. Camel can survive without water for like maximum of like seven days also like without drinking a drop of water they can survive. Camels, uh, thanks to camels uh, kidney and the camels intestines because they are like very the highest uh, water absorbing efficient kidneys and uh, intestines they have got. See in case of camel's dung, you can just, without drying, you can use it for the fire, fire fueling the fire. It's so dry. 
and camel's urine is like so viscous and like so syrupy so it just comes out the maximum water out of the body and coming to the hump's fat because they don't have uh, they don't get proper food throughout the year and all so they'll be eating whenever like they they can eat a lot they can eat and the energy is conserved and they'll it's converted into fat and stored in the hump so when they don't have any food they'll get energy from the fat again the fat will be break down into energy and like the energy get dispersed so camels uh, they say like they can go without food for almost uh, like more than 20 days because of the tax of the hump so this is the myth break about the camels next is the wolf yes you all know wolves how um, and we have seen uh, the mythical creation of werewolf where it sees the moon and it will convert to a wolf the thing is like they wolf howl is kind of a communication between them not just they see the moon and they just howl it's a pure communication uh, thing and there are lots of uh, mis uh, conceptions about uh, wolf one is like uh, they we say like all the wolf the wolf total wolf pack as a single leader it's not like that there's not only single alpha which is leading the full pack and all there'll be lots of families in the wolf and uh, each family like there'll be like a small packs so we have, we have mother and father and their cub their pups so this in a each family there'll be alpha for sure and there is no like such a total alpha for total pack that's again a misconception and for this communication so like some animals will be going for uh, hunting they'll go like uh, miles together for hunt and some animals will be in their home home range on the own territory they'll be like safeguarding the pups the young ones so to communicate within themselves so the howling is one of the important mechanism they have lots of animal communicate with themselves by uh, sound uh, a whale communicate with their songs whales can communicate with like uh, hundreds of miles together in the water by their uh, songs whale song is very popular and uh, lots of animals uh, elephants communicate by the sound so like that the wolves howl just to communicate and even the lion has a very strong roar lion's roar can be heard like after like more than 7 8 kilometers together so for this like same pattern like they need to communicate with their prey so it's not just a wolf is howling at the moon it's just a, a communication another uh, myth is broken here opossum and the tigers uh, you can see uh, three uh, young ones of the opossum opossums are uh, a medium sized rodent so usually like by seeing this picture we will be thinking uh, opossums will hang by the tail always but it's not the truth that's not the truth opossums use their tails for uh, climbing climb up or climb down not for just uh, hanging and one more uh, myth is like opossums mate by hanging that's not true this is all very young ones so they can manage their body weight with their tail but uh, adult opossum can't manage their weight with just their tail they just fall down within seconds another important uh, uh, myth revolving around the others like lemmings like that's one of the biggest uh, myth that's because of a more documentary uh, created by disney they have shown like uh, lemmings would go on uh, suicide themselves but that's not the truth um, lemmings are small uh, type of rodents which is found in the arctic belt so sometimes like they'll get a uh, very scarce scarcity of food and all the thing is like they are very prolific breeders all the rodents are very prolific breeders so there will be a very uh, huge uh, boom in the population so over population over protein will be there so what will happen is like they'll uh, just uh, the new mem members or the like uh, animals which is not getting proper food they'll try to migrate they'll just migrate 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 so like arctic you can there'll be lots of cliffs and all so just they'll be jumping from the cliff they'll 
try to jump to the water actually. So they'll swim together in the water, they'll just uh, dive in the water. Sometimes like they'll uh, end up in diving in the land and they'll dive, but it's not a suicidal uh, jump. It's like, it's kind of a survival jump. It's like kind of the, I am a survival instinct. So like where they don't get much uh, food for them, because in Arctic, usually you don't get a larger amount of food at all. Like it's full of cold, full of ice and snow. So, and in that, like they have very uh, high population due, due to this population explosion, they just uh, move. So this is uh, another myth breaker about the lemmings and suicide. So like till now we have seen uh, much about uh, uh, mammals, myths regarding the mammals. So now we'll move to the birds and other parts. Uh, this is one common myth about uh, bird one is like ostrich. So people say like if ostrich is like uh, scared, they just go uh, dig their uh, head in the hole in the ground. Um, Maybe like this misnomer or this myth would have got created by yeah, some person who was who is like seeing ostrich in the African savanna from very long distance. The thing is like they'll lay, lay their egg on the ground. So they'll dig a small hole, they'll lay the eggs in that. And what they'll do is like uh, they'll sit on the eggs and for the egg, ostrich egg, you all know as you all know, like it is like one of the it's the biggest egg in the world. So it's, it has it has like very thick shell. The ostrich uh, shell is like very thick. So heat penetration and uh, maintaining the heat it's like very difficult for in, during the incubation period. So what they'll do is just put their head on the hole. They'll uh, turn the eggs frequently, like once in a while. So there'll be a like heat transmitting mechanism between the eggs, like so that the incubation is proper. So if a guy is like standing from far away and seeing that, you will think, okay, also just like got scared by me and it's like putting its head on the ground. Actual thing is like if they are scared, they'll run away or else it's a fight or flight reflex. They'll fight if we cross their social distance and go nearby, they'll surely they'll fly, fight. And ostrich limb is one of the strongest limb on the bird, bird kingdom. They have very strong limbs. They can even, like with a single kick, they can even eviscerate us. They can just cut our uh, stomach and like abdomen and take out our stomach and distance out. That much strong animal, he doesn't need any uh, thing to hide their head and save them from the other animals or uh, predators. So the myth is broken here. Another common myth about the birds most of us, like 99% people uh, who doesn't know about uh, birds much, will be thinking, for example, like there will be a small bird nest at the house, say a sparrow or something. Um, from Sometimes like accidentally the chick will fall down. So we all think like if we touch it, our scent will uh, make animal, the bird, the mother bird to Abandon the chicken bone. Actually, that's a pure myth. There is no such thing. And for birds, they don't have a very strong olfactory, like uh, the sense of smell is like not so good in uh, case of birds. So they can't like, go and smell us like any humans that test the uh, birds or not. It's not like that. Even I have seen a case like personally, like I've seen uh, one of my. Uh, I have bought this news from one of my, one of my friends. It's not like they have uh, rescued a uh, Oriole, Golden Oriole. That's a nice uh, bird in this locality. So they have rescued a small chick, Oriole chick, and they have placed in, like nearby to their house, where the mother can uh, visit the bird. Because they are during some cyclone or something, the tree got broken and the nest was damaged. So we advised them to not to keep the bird away from the mother to give access to the mother. What happened was like, it was a nice thing, like the mother revisited the birds again and again. They know like, because you, by the call, they can uh, hear them and they can come and hit the, their chicks. So we have placed them in outside the house, like very, very safe for them. So the mother came, revisited, 
fed the chicks and went. So it's not like you touch the egg ones and uh, it, it will reject the egg one. It's not like it's the milk. So if accidentally you are coming, like if you are uh, seeing any bird, it's like falling from the, uh, from the nest, you can surely keep back in the nest. Nothing will happen. The mother will take care of the egg one. It's not like because we touched, they won't uh, hit the chicks. So this another myth. And uh, another uh, fascinating thing is about owl. So we all think uh, owl can turn their head 360 degrees, like a PTC, a surveillance camera. The thing is, no. Owls can't rotate their head 360 degrees. Like full complete turn, they can't do. They can do almost 270 degrees. Three fourths they can turn. By the body position, you will be seeing it as a 360 degree turn, but it's not a total 360 degree turn. If they do 360 degree turn, okay, they're like, there are some modification on their neck and uh, head bones, like the skull and the uh, neck. The thing is like, there will be lots of blood vessels and the blood vessels and nerves passing through. So if we turn like this, it will all get severe and the animal will die out of that. So owls can't turn 360 degrees totally. They can turn only almost for 200 degrees. The next interesting thing is like, why they need to turn such like for 200 degrees? Because we can almost see almost 180 degrees, our eyes can cover like sideways. But owls, they have a very tubular vision. So it's like a tube. So it's like we are seeing through a tube. So if we need to see animal, like it has to like turn the vision. So the head has to be turned. That's how the owl's uh, eye, eyes work. So that's why like they need to turn their head. And they have a very front facing eyes, not uh, side facing eyes. So the myth is like, they can't turn 360 degrees at all. Next thing is like um, vulture. Yeah, most of us would have seen a picture uh, some taken from some Africa or something. A uh, small uh, human will be like uh, sitting in a crouching position and a vulture will be seeing from away. So people thought like uh, vultures uh, can sense uh, uh, animal or human who are going to die and then they, go, they, they can go and eat. It's not like that. Vultures can't uh, sense like that. It's not like they uh, wait for the animal to die for stalking. Sometimes like if the animal is alive also, if it's going to die, they'll go and eat. It's not like, like they need to wait till they're dead. So vultures can't sense like when the animal is, uh, whether alive is going to die or not. So it's not like that. Vultures have got a very good vision. They can like from a very long, uh, very, very, very tall place, they can easily see the dead animals, they can come. So by the moment they'll see like if the animal is not moving at all, then they can see like animal is not moving, so they can go and eat. It's not it's like that, not uh, stalking business for the vultures. And uh, coming on to another funny thing is like penguins. Most of the movies depicts like there'll be a pair of penguin, they'll be taking care of the ring ones, and the cycle continues. So penguins are not monogamous animals. The monogamous animal means like pairing for life. There are birds which can pair for life, but not the penguins. So penguins are not eternal lovers. For each season, maybe like a couple of seasons, they'll be with one mate and they'll uh, shift the mate to other animals. So that's how the world works. So penguins, they don't pair with their mate for the life. Only for a few seasons, they'll be with one bit, then they'll change. So penguins are not monogam. They are not uh, monogamous anymore. Next one is, we have seen the bird part. And next is the amphibian and reptile thing we are going to see. Um, this is one of very common uh, myth. Even like folklore have this myth. Even uh, like uh, European uh, Western thoughts have also have the same myth. The myth is like if you touch a toad or a frog, you will get what? No, no, straight no. You won't get anything like that. Warts are caused by uh, some uh, type of virus in humans, not by the frogs or toads. 
there are slimy places like maybe like um, and no uh, yeah, i need to say this like uh, mothers around the world they are the like, biggest uh, imaginary people you can see they can imagine to any extent like there's no limit for the imagination most of the creatures mythical creatures and the myths were created by the mothers to scare the child from not doing this some some stuff so maybe like child will be the would have uh, thought of playing with the frog and mother don't like that so they would have told uh, myth like this a lie like that and it has uh, carried over and become a myth it's very strong myth like you can see it every every place you can see if you touch a frog or toad you will get a what no you won't get that and the interesting thing is um, camouflage stuff of uh, chameleons chameleons we think like chameleons can camouflage at any uh, color uh, environment and all it's not like that they have only few colors they can turn into only a few colors like they have very few pigments in that so only for those pigment pigmentation they can change the color and the myth about the color changing pattern of chameleons is we all think they'll uh, change the color for the surrounding the truth is like they change their color according to the mood if they are scared they'll try to blend in with the environment so that's how they came up with so if they are scared they'll think like okay the predators can't see them so they need they'll blend in with the environment that's how they change the color if they are not scared they won't change the color so frequently and another thing about cam um, camellia just like you can see their tails is always pointy like very circle coil um that's again another thing like if the chameleon is like stressed out it's like so scary so they'll that's a sign of expression saying like they are uh, scared so chameleons they don't uh, camouflage themselves according to the surrounding they do camouflage to the surrounding the reason behind that is if they are scared their mood depends and like that uh, gives the idea why the chameleon is like changing the color to the surrounding see if a chameleon is seeing a human next to it surely it will see it as a predator and uh, they will change the color it's not because like if you keep a red color near a chameleon of a green color it will change to red they can't do that the maximum thing they can go is like they can maximum they will try to bend into the environment they will go with the darker uh, darker red color only that much they can do so this is another myth revolving around the uh, animals so next uh, thing about rafael is uh, tortoise shell we should be knowing uh, like uh, we should like always break this uh, myth tortoise shell is not a stone and it has got nerves and blood supply to it and it can sense pain on the shell if you see a tortoise somewhere in the road say something like be gentle not try don't go and uh, try to poke it or uh, pelt it with stone because it's a live uh, creature and the shell has got life to it it has got nerves and blood supply to it so shells is not a stony structure it's kind of uh, just a covering for the internal organs it's a very hard covering that's it always it's uh, not a stony structure next is the snakes in the reptiles and um, particularly in india we have got a very big list for the snakes very big list the lots of myths around the snake and in each region there will be a myth each region according to the snake there will be a myth so usually like uh, one myth around uh, all the places in india and like most of the folklore they'll say they'll won't keep elf uh, snakes milk please don't do that stop elf uh, snakes don't drink milk snakes are reptiles they are not mammals only mammals can digest milk milk has got a carbohydrate called as lactose so lactose produced by uh, cattle cannot be digested properly by uh, um, dog or cat so lactose produced by them vice versa also so reptiles they don't have any enzymes to 
digest the lactose which is present in the milk. So, this is a strict no for the milk, for the snakes. So, first milk is like reptiles, they can't drink milk. They, they can, if they are found like they are thirsty or something, they will drink water. So, like that they can drink milk. But it's not like snakes, they should not drink milk. Snakes are uh, pure carnivorous animal, so they need to have a light way, not the milk. Second thing is like the snake charmer. So we all think like for the sound, for the melody, what is creating by the flute, the snake will dance. No. It's because this myth would have grown long back. Most of us will be knowing now by, by this time, like snakes don't have a proper uh, hearing uh, sense. They can't hear. They will move toward, to the direction of the flute. Next, another important thing is uh, seeking revenge. Snakes don't uh, seek revenge. They don't have such a memory power. Like, even like elephants with a very uh, big memory power, they don't uh, take revenge. But snakes, they can't even remember properly, so they can't take revenge. Only animal in the world which can take revenge is the humans. So, not the other animals. So, snakes, uh, they don't uh, take revenge. That's the myth. Another myth is like, there will be a pair of snake and if you kill one pair, the other mate will come and uh, kill you. No. Another biggest, uh, funniest thing is this. Snakes don't mate for life. They are not monogamous anymore. So, they will, for each season, they will mate. And like, most of the snakes will be having uh, like, uh, constrictor snakes, they will be forming uh, breeding balls. Like, one female with lots of males surrounding so running to it. So, lots of... Uh, Mating will happen at the same uh, breeding time. So, if a snake is like that, so it can't have a pair. So, if you kill a pair, it won't come and uh, take revenge for that animal. So, snakes are not monogamous animal. This is another, again, another myth. And this is another uh, myth which has got a very high uh, conservation and wildlife impact on it the 200 uh, Samboa. No animal in the world has got two head, like one on the head portion and one on the tail portion. You can't have animal like that. If it's there, that's a mythical creature which can be found. So, two headed Sanboa is again another myth. The concept is it's only like a myth. There's no like believing in that. Another thing is that rat snakes have venom on their tail. Rat snake use their tail as a ripping thing. Like if they're scared, if they have a bigger predator or something for them, like they'll use their tail as a whip. So people think like uh, with the whip like will get the venom. No, it's not true. So they are non-venomous snakes and uh, they can't uh, use their venom from the tail at all. There is no venom gland on the tail of the snake. And uh, another important uh, thing about reptile is uh, crocodile tear. Most of us will be like uh, getting this scolding from our uh, teachers or mothers and all, why you are uh, showing a crocodile tear. It's like a false tear. So if we are like, if you are acting and uh, giving is giving a tear for like, you are assuming like we are going to give. So this is a false tear, we say it as crocodile tear. But crocodile tear is a true one. The thing is like, crocodiles have the gland on the throat, like on the base of the palate we say. So the gland, the tear producing gland will be there on you know, the roof of the palate. Crocodiles can't chew and eat like this. They'll tear the prey, they'll make it as a big chunk and they'll just swallow it. So while swallowing, if it's a bigger uh, piece, what it'll do, it'll go and compress the gland on the uh, palate. So by compressing the gland, it'll make the eyes to get the tears out. So this is the main thing about the crocodile tear and it's not acting by the animal. And uh, coming to the last thing, it's like, you know, like uh, the fish and the insect part, lots of um, uh, misnomers and uh, myths here also. Uh, in case of sharks, we say like a single uh, drop in a ocean, a single drop of blood in a ocean can uh, uh, a shark can sense it and come and kill us. No, 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 they can't do that. None of the animals can do that. They have very strong uh, power of uh, olfaction, the smelling power. 
but not to this extent. A single drop in the ocean is like it's a maximum evolution you can do in the world. Single drop in the ocean. You can't do that. So a snake, uh, compared to humans, the shark's uh, swelling power is very high, but not to this extent. Most of the movies will be say, showing like there will be like there will be cut uh, wound, cut wound in the finger. They will be putting their hand in the ocean, and shark will come. No, it's not like that. They can't do that. They'll, they need the, in the two in the ocean. They need uh, barrels of blood to get the shark. Next thing is uh, goldfishes. Most another common thing is like they'll have a short term memory loss. People say like goldfish only remember for a few seconds. No, it's not true. The truth behind this, they can remember very well. They can we can condition even uh, goldfish. You can condition the animal for uh, uh, even feeding. Like feeding time, they'll be like properly uh, tuned. So such animal, they don't have any short term memory loss. It's all like pure milk. And another myth is like mute as a fish. So we all think fishes are mute. No. Fishes can also make sound. They can make noise. They can communicate with their noise. See, like we would have seen very few species of fishes which are uh, grown in a tank, small uh, terrarium or aquarium. So those fishes, some species, they don't communicate by their sound. But lots of species, they communicate by their sound. Even some species, they communicate with their scales. They'll rub their uh, scale and they'll, the friction makes a sound and by that sound they'll communicate. So fishes are not new. That's again another one. Coming on to the insect part. Uh, common uh, misnomer is like if we catch a butterfly by wing, it will die. No, it's not like that. If you catch a butterfly by its wing, <coughs> sorry, if you catch a butterfly by its wing, there will be some slight shedding of uh, scales on the wings. And if an animal is not stressed out, usually they will stress out. If not, like if you are catching for some time and releasing them, nothing will happen. They will fly away. They won't die if you catch the wing. You will say like their soul is in the wing. So that's why they, if you catch the wing, they will die. It's not like that. If you catch the wing and you strangle it, if you make animal very stressed, because of stress, they will die. Not because of the wing. Next is another uh, thing, common uh, folklore myth. If you cut an earthworm into two, it will become two earthworms. No. Earthworm has got some regenerative powers, like in case of reptiles also, like those lizards. If you cut their tail, the tail will go, go back. But in earthworms, if you cut at the center, it won't go back because lots of uh, internal organs which passes in that. If you cut the internal organ, they'll die for sure. If you cut near the tail, the tail will tail will go back. If you cut there, no going back again. So it's again another myth. If you cut the earthworm at the center, they'll die. They won't go back. And um, another important thing is about bee. We all say bees they'll sting and they'll die. It's not true. So bee sting is uh, part for the bees for just laying the eggs. Honey bees, there are lots of bees in the world. So honey bees, bumblebee, there there are few species. Sometimes they'll die because like they'll uh, they have a bob on that uh, sting. So bee sting has a bob. So if it penetrates, the bob will go and uh, stuck in the animal's skin. So if you pull it, it will tear the abdomen of the animal. That's how they die. So honeybees, some species of honeybees only do that, but not all the species of bees. So bees can repeatedly oh. sting. It's not like they sting once and they'll die. They can repeatedly sting. And apart from this, like there's another important thing about why there is what's the importance between this myth? It's a myth, it's a, just a common myth. So with this myth, we can uh, live, it's nice to hear. And it's like, uh, we can even like uh, make the children's laugh. The children will be happy to hear this. So this all, what's the impact of the myth? What's going to happen if the myth is there? We'll be having this question like, why is, 
Why myth is so important? Why? It's a myth. That's it. The important thing is that even the myth has got a negative role on the impact of conservation and wildlife. So there are lots of myths in Chinese uh, mythologies. So they say like uh, tiger's paw is very important for them. So they'll kill the tiger. So China's tiger population, China has uh, two species of tigers, like some species of tigers. You know, Chinese tiger and uh, South China tiger, both have uh, gone now. And uh, like, and they have started uh, killing tigers around the world. Just because of the myth. So if people are not believing in myth, these things won't happen. Most of the poachings, most of the poachings say like for the um, treatment aspect or uh, just for uh, superstitious, all these are because of myths. If you know the truth and if you're not uh, believing in myth, so nothing is like you can say about it. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor, for the informative session. Uh, participants, if you have a question, you can uh, make use of the rice option. So a few of the participants will get a chance to interact with the presenter. Uh, doctor, we have some, some more questions in the chat. So we will discuss that first. Uh, we have a question from uh, Praveen Vasantraj. Pambu Palivanguma. Okay. Um, I have told this guy, the palm is solid and the palm is very long. They can't remember much. Uh, on the on the log, so, very long. Next question, please. Uh, thank you, doctor. And um, yeah, Evangeline has asked a question. Oru palm is very long. Is that true? Again, it's not a true thing. So, if you think like a palm book, putty board, and the other one, nariya putty, and the other one, so one night, so like nariya putty, and the other one, like, what? Eta or ella onna kalam baithala. So, I mean, like, put a man, and the other like one night, so one baithala, and putty, and all that. So, one palm board, and the other one, one palm board, and the other one, like, very palm, thaniya, or one palm, one night, so one, very long, and the other one, nariya palm, and all that. All that, so that's why, all total myth, na all. And uh, Shekhar has asked a question. Star tortoise wheat la vechirunda yogam nu solranga pet shop la vandu kadekuma. Is that true? Star tortoise number la wheat la vechirunda yogam kadekada kandipa jail kadekum. Avandu it's Indian wildlife. Namandu wheat la vallathe kuda adu. Exotic tortoise vanna na vallakala. Exotics with the proper permissions and clearance. Alla vallakala. But start our day switching the yoga and the jail down on board. Okay, doctor. And um, Sangeeta has asked a question Nari Pallu, is that lucky to have at home? Nari Pallu is lucky to for the Nari, not for us. Uh, it's total mitzta. Uh, there is no such uh, thing as like. The, even like lots of uh, like nari pallu for the jackal's teeth, fox teeth, and uh, sometimes like people have uh, tiger and lion's teeth and all like during older times. So they'll say it is pride, but it's not like that. Nothing is going to happen. Nari pallu is like only good for the nari, not for us. Okay. And Balaji Ramalingam has a question. Sara pambu kadicha visham eruma. Um, yes, that's what I said. Like, Sarapamba is a non-venomous snake. It's a version of a lot of Pamba. So, Sarapamba is a version of a lot of Pamba. Sarapamba is a version of a lot of Sarapamba. Okay, doctor. Thank you. Uh, next question. Uh, Mohamed Hasif has a question. Uh, Sarapamba is a non-venomous snake. It's a version of a lot of Pamba. And Mohamed Hasif has a question. Like, Nai night la ule ita and the wheat la irukko ongilukku life threatening a irukko pothu nna solluvanga. Is that true? Uh, for dogs, howl at night, wheat low lamble clown, one night, sleep that get on with it. I know weird clan the double air. So, wheat and I will like a mother and another like Nai Uli Ramar to go to the lake. And another myth is Nai Uli to pay over the Sulonga, Adwana Puina, a total myth. The Lama they don't believe it, belief table. Nai Uli Tang, the time of Pukana get him at the other one. And again, a question from Balaji Ramalinga What all the Indian snakes have a uh, winnow? 
Well, pardon, pardon me. Can you repeat the question? Yeah. What are the Indian snakes that are venomous? Venomous, okay. There are lots of species, but uh, I'll wonder, like we have uh, big forms so alone. All species are more important. Um, the uh, normal uh, Indian uh, cobra, spectacle cobra, uh, crate, Russell sweeper, Saskel sweeper. This is all the very common This is like we have got the, the biggest uh, venomous snake in cobra. So this is very common. That is the first of the four big four very common snakes. Last la so in cobra is very shy snake. Apart from that, uh, there are a few venomous snakes also, like uh, some places we have pit vipers are there. So all are very common. There are pit vipers are there, coral snakes are there. So sea snakes are very venomous snakes. Are there. So these are all like other commonly found snakes. Are there. So Indian subcontinent, but the big four is very important. The Indian cobra, great, great level the banner great. That is all common. But the common great is very common. Russell sweeper and the Saskel sweeper, all species are. And Mrs. Vasanta has a question. Do green snakes target the human eyes directly? Uh, this is another uh, misnomer or like misconception what we have. The green snake, green white snake, green white snake, it's an arboreal snake. They'll uh, live in the trees mostly. In the ground, you can't see the, the animals in the ground. So what will happen, like they'll hang the tree. Well, we walk or something like due to like they'll get scared if they are hanging from the tree and if they suddenly they are seen. The bright thing what they can see is the eyes. So Tapana face kita if they are trying to approach our face also, we'll say we'll think it's trying to bite our eyes, but that's not true. They want uh, target eyes and all. Because of their uh, position, their uh, ecology, like they are found in the tree tree branches. Mostly they'll try to avoid our uh, Conflict. You should most of the times, if there is no chance at all, for their own defense, they'll try to bite and nothing will happen. It's a non venomous snake again. Okay. Now, uh, participants can interact with a presenter. So, participants uh, can uh, make use of the rise hand option and uh, they will get a chance to talk with the presenter. Uh, Chaitanya. Chaitanya Balasubramaniam. Uh, kindly unmute yourself. And you can ask your questions with the presenter. Okay, Dr. Rand. Uh, we will have one more question, doctor, like uh, we got uh, through chat window. Uh, yeah. Like, Bali Mela Vilinda Sagunum Parknum Soldranga. And how, how how much it is true? Okay. Um, Bali Mela Vilinda Sagunum Pakatavala, Bali on the one Adikam with it up. It's nothing else with the Mela, one Maga, Sagunum Pakavadilla, the Makada. Uh, like most of the time, wild animals cover I didn't uh, enter in those parts. But there are lots of things. Uh, in domestic, like uh, like all uh, false conceptions. Bali uh, sometimes like even sapad level into Nothing is like that. Bali is na Bali is venomous animal like they are mostly all reptiles me Bacteria is Salmon particular species. So, on the species, on the now, so far, like, I mean, like, why two body level, I mean, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, So, only male level, that one, male level, that one, that way, that one, that one, that one, that one, that Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor, for this in for this wonderful session. Uh, and debugging all the false false belief and myths that we have about on wildlife. It was really an eye opening session for us. Thank you so much, Doctor. And we also like to thank our additional principal, Chief Conservator of Forest and Director, Piru Jabasis Jena, IFS, sir, and our Deputy Director, S. Sudha Raman, IFS, our Assistant Director, Piru K. Shegar, sir, IFS, for the all and motivational support for our entire team. I would like to thank all of our participants for the session on behalf of Arunjana Zoological Park. 
everybody stay home stay safe stay connected with aranjana zoological park park for many more exciting events and contest thank you all see you again in another wonderful event